Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the Bench Warmer Sports Podcast. I'm Rob Seraf, and your host, as always, joined by David and Theor. Boys, it is arguably the biggest Sunday in the entire sports calendar, Super Bowl Sunday. Boys, I am excited. How are you guys doing, and how excited are you guys to watch the Super Bowl? I know that is a question that could vary based off the results for Theodore, but how are you guys doing today, and yeah. how hyped are you guys for the Super Bowl? I'm doing great. You know, look, watching Philly play in the Super Bowl is not what I wanted. I'm not happy with doing it. But regardless, it's the Super Bowl. I mean, it's hard not to get excited. It's sad that football's over, obviously, but you can't go into the Super Bowl with a negative mindset because biggest sports event of the year. And you got to be happy that we're going to watch it. Yeah, I uh, 100% agree with that. I honestly think that I mean, when it comes to, like, compared to last year, I'm probably, I am I don't feel that hype. I'm almost in the same way of, like, some people are like, oh, I'm hyped for this, like, you know, the halftime show with Beyonce. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, that'd be fun to watch, you know, and so is the game. I'm kind of, I'm not, of course, at the same level, but I'm honestly not crazy hyped about this game. Uh, I mean, Philly will, you know, burn if they win or lose, honestly. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, uh, I mean, seeing Kansas City again is like, oh, look, it's the Warriors, you know. It's kind of kind of feels like that. Um, I wish it was the Bengals, uh, yeah. but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, look, this Chiefs team deserves a massive amount of respect. Uh, we'll talk about it more later, but that's how I'm feeling. I think we've got to recognize that the hype for the Bucks chiefs Super Bowl, that Mahomes versus Brady, set such a high expectation and i mean it's like that's as good as a super bowl gets as far as like pre-game right i feel like from an excitement standpoint it's gonna be hard for anything to live up to that for a decent amount of time you know what i'm saying yeah but yeah i think just when you think you've seen it all the bar can always be raised unfortunately as davian mentioned the Bengals are not here which means the evan mcpherson super bowl mvp award winning whenever that happens that will be put off until next year unfortunately next year don't worry but trust me when when it happens we will all hear it from Theodore and I am all for it let's dive right in to our Super Bowl preview this podcast is essentially just going to be breaking down the Super Bowl the two teams also one thing I'm quite excited I don't think many people are excited about this I don't like ads but the Super Bowl ads I'm very intrigued to see what ads there are because there's normally a couple good ones there's normally a couple ones that are just absolutely terrible but you know what at the end of the day some of the ones that are absolutely terrible are still memorable nonetheless i don't know if you guys have any thoughts on the ads before we actually get into the two teams uh, i'm excited that there are no crypto ads this year that's right. oh they surely won't be <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i'm excited for that i mean i've you know like there's some uh companies that are like released their ads early i took a look at some of those so pretty fun Honestly, the one thing about I love this about Super Bowl before we really jump into like the game itself is just that like you get people together, player, people who watch, people who don't, and it's just a great time just sitting together, eating wings, eating pizza or whatnot. Uh, I'm just usually one of those guys that's usually on the couch actually watching the game because you know it actually like what's going on actually matters to me. Uh, so you know, uh, it's definitely gonna be hype. I think it's gonna be it's just you know it's the Super Bowl. I mean. No matter who plays, it's the Super Bowl at the end of the day. It's one of the biggest uh, events in, Amer- you know, every year in America uh, and across the world. So, you know, that's all I got to say about the Super Bowl in itself. What are you all doing for the game? Uh, party with family or what, what's the uh, viewing situation? I haven't decided yet. We're going to see. I'm doing it at my house. I got family and I got family friends coming over. And then I've been invited to a few other friends' houses. And like, oh, you know, you could just drive over. I'm like, I, I, I'm not missing a single any play just so I could drive over to your house. So uh, that's my plan. Uh, Theodore, what's your plan? Yeah, same as you. You know, I, I was didn't want to go over to a friend's, you know, watch with my family is what we've done the past couple of years. Got, you know, cousins, grandfather coming up. So that, that'll be a fun time, you know. That's great to hear. You yeah, love to hear. Like Next year in college, I can go to all those two parties. And do it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. So other things to mention real quick before we dive in. First, the Mets. I don't know if you guys heard. The New York Mets. It's all about the Mets. They have a Super Bowl ad, which is I'm I'm very thrilled to see. I know you guys aren't Mets fans, obviously, but I, I, I'm personally 
Well, I don't know. That's why I'm excited to see the ad. That's fascinating. And another thing that I have to say, and get this out of the way before we hop in, I've been saying this, and I've been trying to lobby for this for a very long time, very long time, being five, six years. You need to make Mondays after the Super Bowl a national holiday. No one should be. Yes. No one should have to go to work after the, the day after the Super Bowl. Yes. I just think that's just. I I don't like that personally. I think we all just need a day off to just relax. Obviously, a lot of people have President's Day off. A lot of people have this day off. But I think we yeah, need a, a day, a firm day in February that we have off. Rafi, we've got at our school we do senior skip day, so we all yeah. Just, so our school we, we do that as well, but ours was back in like April, I believe. So it's for no, yeah. we're just like all going to skip all us seniors the day after the Super Bowl not going. Uh, that's hype. I might be doing that with my school. It's just like we have like a much – we don't have that many seniors. So it's just like mm-hmm. you got to convince like everyone on board to like do it. And probably not going to happen. But I might just skip depending on what Let happens. it be known. If it goes into overtime. Probably. Let it be known that regardless, we are all academic weapons on this podcast. We are we academic weapons. Are. Let's move into the game. I love talking about all the festivities and everything around the game, but obviously the big thing is the game. Eagles versus Chiefs, obviously not the team that Theodore wanted to see, the team being the Eagles, but we have some good storylines. I don't know if there's any storylines that you guys wanted to talk about, but I love the Kelsey Bowl. I think that's amazing. The first time oh, yeah. in history so where cool. two players are going up against – two brothers are going up against each other in the Super Bowl. Obviously we had the Harbaugh Bowl back, I believe, in 2012 or 2023, I or 2013, pardon me. So that was obviously a great game, but we'll see what happens for the Kelsey Bowl. And then Andy Reid obviously got fired, I believe, by the Eagles and wound up joining the Chiefs. So now this is his former team, the Eagles, while he's coaching his current team, the Chiefs. So I thought those were two very good storylines. Boys, are there any big storylines that you guys are looking out for, either on the injury field side of things, which we'll get into with when we're discussing offenses, or just in general? One thing that needs to be talked about, um, and a lot of people have said this, loser of the coin toss is going to win the game. Loser of the coin toss has won nine straight. Those are kind of just little figures and stuff that people point out around the Super Bowl that I always love getting sucked into just because they're fun to look at. I know a ton of people are just going to bet money line on whoever, you know, doesn't win the coin toss, which... I think Metro More Sports does not promote that, right? No. Would I be correct? We do not promote gambling, and we do not promote stupid gambling like that. There's oh, David, the out. amount of I mean, come on, it's a coin toss. The amount of there's change. so many Nine bets that get my happen. goodness, no. what it would be. Y'all remember when I flipped a coin to make a World Cup pick? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah that was fun. Yeah, I, I think we were wrong with that. I was too. wrong. Now, next yeah. up, Theodore, yeah, just all the <laughs> you know what? Let's just take it up a notch. Theodore, just mortgage your entire college and the rest of your life and your house for your family's yeah. house for this yeah, coin I toss. Come on, make it happen. I think I like those odds. You know, fifty fifty. <laughs> think about it. If I win, I'd have two families. Two houses, two mortgages. I'd have two of everything. <laughs> well, what can you go wrong? David, we might have just push Theodore down a gambling addiction path. We might just push Theodore down. Hopefully the that doesn't yeah. happen. There is a lot of Davian, are there any storylines that you like heading into the uh, I, I love the Kelsey Bowl. I, I've been watching their podcast. That's that's the best uh, part too. It, right when it started. And it's so much fun. And they brought their parents on too. And it's just so much fun. Just like It's just brotherly love between the two of them. Like, yeah, they talk a bit smack here and there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, look, I like that storyline. I mean, uh, there's like you know, just storyline of like Mahomes being out there again. It's kind of like, and for the first time, he's like he, he's the like underdog in Super Bowl, and everyone's really doubting him. And all of the, there's like a lot of hype behind the Eagles. I like, I, I kind of like that dog mentality, that underdog mentality. Like, I want to see how Mahomes reacts to that. And I, I guess Jalen Hurts. I mean, him and like that in itself is a and Nick Sirianni. Like those, that duo in itself is a storyline. Uh, you know, Hurts coming off like, you know, he came from Bama. He came from these big schools where, you know, he had the opportunity to be on the national stage like this. The question is, does he crumble or will he continue to push forward uh, really with like this type of pressure? And which, you know, I, I will touch on later, but I think that's a factor. Absolutely. So let's dive into the offensive side of things. The Chiefs are definitely a concern for me just because Mahomes obviously looked good last, not last week, two weeks ago. 
versus the Bengals. But once again, he is still noting that his ankle is bothering him, whether that is playing mind games with the Eagles or not. Still something to think about. Juju and Kadarius Tony are, I believe, full participants in practice. I think everyone on their team is a full participant in practice. But nonetheless, those are still injuries that are cutting it quite close. Clyde's Edward Alaire is back for the Chiefs. Unfortunately, though, McCole Harbin has been placed on IR. Obviously, he's been hurt for a while, but nonetheless, he's a good weapon to have on the team when healthy. McKinnon and Isaiah Pacheco were both also fully full participants. They haven't really been dealing with too much, but it's like ankle, hand injuries. So the Chiefs are still recovering, a little banged up. It doesn't seem like any of the guys, aside from McCole Harmon, will be out for this game. But nonetheless, I feel like the offense is going to be a concern for me overall versus the Eagles' very solid defensive front and core defense. I agree with the whole notion of like Mahomes being limited as a factor. Um, but I think it's more so mind games because we saw how you played against the Bengals. But for him to continuously to come out and say, like, it's still bothering, it's still bothering me, my question is, you know, if he gets, like, sacked by Fletcher Cox and he – and Cox, you know, big man, I don't know how much he weighs – uh, lands on his ankle, how much will that really affect him? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, my biggest worry is Cardavius Tony and Juju. Yes, Juju's a full go, but Cardavius Tony being limited, we saw how the Chiefs kind of struggled without having, you know, all of their, uh, you know, main wide receiver pieces. And considering that the Eagles are uh, ninth, you know, they rank top 10 when it comes to, uh, uh, they rank first when it comes to defending the uh, the pass. You know, they will defend, they will, I think they will walk down Kelsey quickly. And if they do that, you know, what, you know, I think it's going to be, what is my home's target? And it's going to be a really big factor. Will the Chiefs be able to run the ball? Will New, New Jersey born uh, Isaiah Pacheco uh, be able to really kind of carry this team? And, and I think that he might be a Super Bowl MVP. If the Chiefs win, Isaiah Pacheco is a Super Bowl MVP because I only see that the Chiefs really have an outright win if they're able to run the ball. And really, the Eagles, on the when it comes to the run, they're 16th in the run. The problem is the Chiefs on offense, they're 20th in the run. Uh, you know, I you know statistics don't doesn't mean anything because it's you know it's Super Bowl Sunday, it's one game, it's that's it. Um, but you know, it's just some things to consider. So I think that this game goes down to the run, which team can run, and that team which can run. Is he going to win the game? Yeah, I like what you said about Pacheco. I actually, before I throw this over to you, Theodore, to talk, discuss the Chiefs' offense before we continue on to the Eagles' offense as well. I really like how Jarek Jarek McKinnon finished the season, the regular season. I thought he looked great, and he he provided an additional weapon that could be you could put him in the backfield, but he can also primarily be used as a wideout get some screens, get some dink and dunk plays. I thought he was very effective like that. And he was, especially the game versus the Texans. Obviously, he didn't want to be in overtime versus the Texans, but I thought McKinnon had a really good, really strong game there. So I, I agree with you, David. I think if the Chiefs win this game and they put up a good amount of points, it's going to come down to one of their running backs or even two of their running backs really stepping up. Theo, I'm going to throw it over to you now. What are your thoughts on the Chiefs' offense? Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Pacheco is... You know, look, for a seventh-round pick to have this much of an impact, absolutely incredible. Um, the one thing that you got to look at, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, the Eagles' defense is just too stacked. I mean, I, I admit I was in denial about it. I kept under, you know, rating how elite this Eagles team is. They have four players with 10-plus sacks, absolutely incredible. They have elite linebackers. They have two, you know, all pro corners in Bradbury and Slay. It's like, how do you beat them? How, what flaw in that defense can you point out? And I'd say it doesn't necessarily come down to the running game because maybe Philly does a great job guarding the running game. But I guarantee you there'll be some weakness that, and this may even be like a game time adjustment that Kansas City is able to find something and exploit it on this Philly team. It could just be something as simple as, the, like, an out route to Kelsey, which could open up other elements of the passing game. Like, something will come up. Philly's, Philly's good. They're really, really good, but they're not elite enough to completely shut down Kansas City's offense. So, I don't expect Kansas City to put up, like, 40 points or something on Philly, 
but I do expect them to consistently be able to drive because of Mahomes and this offense's ability to read and react. Yeah, and let's move over. Mahomes. Yeah, let's. Mahomes. Is the yes, threat. and let's move over to the, move on over to the Eagles' offense, which is just quite stacked. Obviously, they just have a beefy offensive line. It just, again, it just looks like the Eagles as a whole, through a health and a depth and just an overall team perspective, look like the better team. But then again, Andy Reid is one of the best coaches of the past decade. And when you have Patrick Mahomes, I think you can always just bank on the Chiefs. As I was saying with the run game, with the Chiefs, I think that if the Eagles are going to win this game, they're going to be very reliant on the run. Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, they were both amazing. I know that might trigger some PTSD for Theodore from two weeks ago, but or three weeks ago, rather, pardon me. But that's besides the point. I just think the Eagles' run game is going to be the clear thing, led by their offensive line, obviously, that is going to really, really help them no. go. No. And win the no, Super Bowl. I'm telling you, no. and they're gonna win. I, they're right gonna now. win. And I just need to win. say also before I throw it over to you, Davian. We on the Bench Warmer Sports I'm Podcast not do not condone of animal abuse, Davian. <laughs> do not let okay. the fans. Speak. Okay, I can I condemn all animal abuse. This is a Michael Vick Eagles jersey. I'll leave it at that. My next point is simple as this: It will be exactly what Theodore did last week with the Chiefs against the Bengals game. I think that the Eagles will win, but I will not be surprised if the Chiefs win. Simple as that. I mean, look, the Eagles are just much better on paper. Um, I I see Theodore's walked off. I think think he's pissed. But, um, you know, I think that – okay. I mean, they're out of the playoffs. Your jersey doesn't matter. Um, I think that the Eagles are just a better team on paper. I think they have a lot of things going for them. A.J. Brown – I mean, this team is stacked all across the board. I don't see the Chiefs' defense being able to stop Jalen Hurts. But what I see is if they are able to put on a good QB spy, put pressure on Jalen Hurts, if you get that pressure on Jalen Hurts and he walks into halftime, like really, you know, the Eagles are down by a bit, I don't see the Eagles really being able to come back in this game. I think it's just so much pressure on Jalen Hurts, you know, this – QB, who just all of a sudden has gained this like newfound leadership on this team, I don't see them really being able to win. But I mean, to flip on, on the flip side, the Chiefs are banged up all across the board. All right, the Eagles are resting their players. The Chiefs are barely getting their players to play. Uh, Mahomes' injury worries me. Yes, he played phenomenal against the Bengals, but I don't like. I feel that if he gets hit once or twice or three times, it will really like you will see the effects of that. And because of that, I'm going with the Eagles. So okay, time to go Philly hater mode in a second when Rafi throws it over. Yes, I want to just throw one thing out there before we let Theodore go on a little, a little bit of a rant. Is it uh, is he a bit salty that he lost to the Eagles a couple weeks ago? Maybe. Is it because they're bitter rivals? Maybe. Is this going to sound extremely biased? Anything that comes out of Theodore's mouth? Yeah, probably. But I just want to again hem- emphasize: if the Chiefs want to win this game, they're going to have to shut down the run. And, Davian, you're right. If the Chiefs can get up two, three scores entering the half, that's going to put a lot of pressure on Jalen Hurts because it's not going to – the Eagles will still be able to run the ball, but they're going to need points in a more quicker pace than just being able just to keep handing the ball off and just shove it – shove through the Chiefs' defensive line. Theodore, it's your time. It is my time. Okay. Here's my problem with the Philly team. They're frauds. They are elite. They are frauds, too, but they're also elite, sadly. I do not trust Jalen Hurts. I do not. And, look, he has, time and time again, found a way to succeed this year. And, yeah, he deserves some credit for that. Let's take a look at the last time he was in a championship game, though, you know. Oh, You're reaching. You are wrecked. on thin ice right now, Theodore. Okay, maybe it's reach. Hear me out. Completely got wrecked by Georgia and I had this was to years be ago. bailed was out by two at Tagovailoa. A couple years later at Oklahoma, got absolutely ran through by Joe Burrow and LSU. I know it's a bit of a stretch to bring back his college what days. What a stretch. It's a bit of a stretch, but... How can you compare losing to I, I think, no, no, I think no, no, what Theodore no, no, no. is saying is Mac Jones is an elite quarterback because he won at Alabama. 
Okay. You, yes. Yes. Okay. Continue Point being, he has never put together a complete playoff run. Never has. What makes you think it'll start now? I really don't see it. And also, I mean, look what he's had to do this year. When has he really had to step up and make the big play? When? He hasn't. He's always been able to just rely on the dominant run game that he has and the incredible offensive line. And look, I can't knock the line. It's the best in football. The run game's elite. I mean, Kenneth Gainwell's going off. Boston Scott is scoring against teams besides the Giants now, which is absurd. And obviously, Miles Sanders is the elite back on that team. And, you know, their ability to convert fourth downs, I mean, if it's fourth and one, it's basically an automatic conversion that's absolutely absurd. It's a game changer. But I also think the Chiefs have enough playmakers, you know, Jones and Clark on the line, to get to him. I really think they'll be able to knock off a couple sacks. And I think the Chiefs offense does enough to put Jalen Hurts in a position where he has to make plays. That's what I expected the Niners to do last week. It didn't happen. But, look, I mean, we saw it happen in the Niners quarterback situation. Patrick Mahomes is a different animal. He's on another level. And I fully expect and fully believe that when the lights are brightest, when he has to step up, Jalen Hurts will not be able to. All right. Theodore, you kind of convinced me right there. Wow. Thank you, David. Wow. I am. You, no, no. Just like quickly to comment, Robbie. Before you My started. goodness. He's going to get used to invest in Bitcoin right. now and FTX. Oh, boy. Those are <laughs> terrible pitches. He gets already invested in both. Oh my gosh. No, no, guys, 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 guys. I've only invested into a clothing brand, which by the David, way, David, out, don't bet your work. whole tuition on Evan McPherson winning Super Bowl MVP next year. Please don't. All right, continue with your <laughs> um, okay. Well, I, I think Theodore's really on point. I think that the Chiefs defense and the Chiefs team in general is being underworked. Oh, absolutely. Um I, and I think that I I always love rooting for the underdog. I mean that's one of the main reasons why, you know, I've been, I have been and I it will always be a Tom Brady fan. He was always an underdog. You know, he was not an you know, underdog. A few Super Bowls ago, 28 to down 25 points that they went a foul. You know, so, here, let me go on a little rant a because we're, we're talking about the Super Bowl. Um, but, 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 the like, worst thing about that Super Bowl was I was never happy at any point because I knew never to doubt Tom Brady. So while everyone was getting excited and riding the highs of being up, I knew what was coming the entire time and I had. No fun that entire night. It was terrible. Continue on, Davian. Um. So yeah, you know, um, as usual, Rafi's uh, Falcons choked. And um, Boa, point is that Very I nice seriously, I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, I I don't I, I don't see uh, the Eagles really being able to match up the hype that they're going through. Uh, it's just so many questions among the Eagles, and I feel like, I kind of what Rafi mentioned earlier is that. The teams that they've been playing, they haven't been the same level of competition as we've seen at AFC. And I think what we're going to be seeing in the next few Super Bowls is, you know, like an NFC team that's going to be, you know, the record and the numbers and rankings will be just as good as, you know, the Eagles this year. But the teams that they're going against are not as good. Like if you look at the NFC, it's much less competitive than the AFC. In a few years, it will be insanely competitive. Don't get me wrong. But I don't see that right now. I don't see the Eagles winning. I'm changing my pick. I see the Chiefs winning. Yeah, I mean, when you play the Giants three times in a season, like, obviously those are all, like, can we really test, like, can we really yeah, rely on the on. Eagles? Like, how do you consider that, like, an important win? Right, exactly. Let's move over quickly to the defense. Does anyone have any thoughts on the defense? Yeah, obviously the big thing is the Eagles defense. But once again, as we were saying with the offenses, if, if the Eagles, if the Chiefs can run the ball, against the Eagles' front, then I think the Eagles are going to have a bit of a rough night. Yeah, I think we've covered everything, you know, defensively. All right. So special teams, very important. Harrison Butker has (laughs) had a bit of an off year. He's been solid of late, but that's something to take note of, obviously, kicking and punting, punting with field position, kicking with obviously making field goals. (laughs) Brett Maher, sorry. They can play an impact in the game. So I think it's also important to highlight that Obviously, 
And yeah, I know Davian has been switching numerous times, but we're going to give our Super Bowl picks right now. I'd like to hear a score as well from both of you guys. Theodore, we'll start with you so Davian can flip his pick a couple more times before we get over to him. Nice. Okay, so I, of course, will not be picking the Philadelphia Eagles if there was any doubt in any of your minds. If there is, you know, get yourself checked out because uh, how do you miss the cues? So, yeah, Kansas City Chiefs will win this game. And I'm back and forth a lot on scores, but I think I'm going to settle on a margin of 27 to – or, yeah, 27 to 17. As my you have the point. Eagles getting only 17 points? I do. Wow, wow. All right, Davian, this is your pick. You have to hold yourself to it. Right. We're not doing the Theodore half in, half out like he did with the Bengals Chiefs, saying that the Bengals were going to win and then made a Davian's whole TikTok. Davian's taking that to another level. Guys, 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 guys. Well, look, look, look. I, I mastered this podcast perfectly. I will take a clip from this podcast and in place into the TikTok of when I correctly predicted the Eagles winning or when I pr- correctly predicted the Chiefs winning. Look, anyway, and now we have this clip of you admitting. I got, I got Chiefs winning 28 to – 27 uh eagles special teams uh collapses at some point they miss an extra point uh eagles end up going for two they miss chiefs end up on top yeah i got i have oh boy you know what i i have to be i have to be the kirk curb street here i was in on college game day you guys are both going the chiefs we can't have this happen we cannot have the jinx so are we for the sake think. of that before we close the show, fly, Eagles, fly on the – sing it. Theodore, come on, sing it. On the road to victory. To victory. I have the Eagles winning the Super Bowl 35-21 to 21 against everything I've said. The main reason why is this Eagles team has just not given me a reason not to pick them winning the Super Bowl this year. I know Theodore is not going to like that, but you guys will thank me for not cursing doing the dreaded college game day curse with our podcast but that's going to be it for this edition of the bench warmer sports podcast we hope you enjoyed the super bowl preview we hope you enjoy your super bowl sunday once again there should be no work or any school on that monday it should be a national holiday Agreed. but once again Agreed. we hope you enjoyed it be sure to check out our tiktok i'm sure we're going to be getting up some more super bowl content i released my first official bracketology march is coming soon so you guys are going to want to keep your eyes on that for Theodore, for David, I'm Rafi. We hope you had deserved a great year. rest of your day, a great Super Bowl Sunday, and overall a great, great week. Peace. See you guys.